you get when you cross a crocodile with a chicken? A crocodoodle do. In today's video, I have some slow cooker meals for you, and it's not gonna be one of those like throw and go crock pot meals, but what they are gonna be is absolutely delicious. You are not going to wanna miss these amazing ideas. I have one breakfast, two dinners, and a side dish that is meant to impress. Pull out your slow cooker slash uh, crock pot. You know, do you ever find that you call them a crock pot even though that's the brand and not what it is? Kind of like you call a Kleenex a Kleenex instead of a tissue even though it's the brand. I do that all the time. To me, it's a crock pot even though I know that's the brand. What do you do? Tell me down below what you do. Anyway, if you like cooking videos and your slow cooker, hook me up with a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. So before we get to all of the goods and I show you these amazing recipes, yes, recipes will be linked down below in the doobly-doo for you. Huge thanks to Porter Road, who is our sponsor today. They provided all of the meat that I will be using in today's video. Porter Road's an online butcher shop that delivers their product directly to your house. You can choose from an impressive variety of dry aged beef, pork, chicken, and lamb, including really rare butcher cuts. Now listen, I live in a really small town. I don't have a butcher basically anywhere I live. All of my grocery stores, most of them don't even have a butcher counter. I can't even go to a counter and ask them what I want. So for me, it makes perfect sense to be able to order these really high quality specialty ingredients and cuts and have them delivered right to my house so I don't even have to put on pants. They work with local trusted farmers to ensure that your meat is always flavorful, tender, and cut by hand. The animals are raised outside with no added hormones, antibiotics, or additives. I have been so impressed by the quality of the meat. I think you guys will like them as well and they're going to give you an amazing deal today. So right now Porter Road is offering my viewers 15% off your order. If you go to porterroad.com slash FFM, I will have that first link down below for you. That's porterroad.com slash FFM, P-O-R-T-E-R-R-O-A-D.com slash FFM. Okay, now let's get to the slow cooking. I am so excited about this recipe right here. It is chorizo breakfast casserole, and it has all of my favorite things in it. But to start off, we do need to cook up our chorizo. So let's go over and do that right now. Hey, we'll start with something I don't love to do, which is over here in a skillet, because I usually just like to throw things in the crock pot, but I promise you this stuff will make it worth it. I promise. So I'm gonna take my beautiful loose chorizo, and if you've been with my channel for any time at all, you know I love chorizo. It looks beautifully spicy today, and I diced up one onion, one red bell pepper, and two jalapenos. That's a joke. And we'll saute all of these together, kind of brown up our meat, crumble it up, we're gonna end up with a wonderful, delicious, spicy layering option for our hash brown casserole. 12 seconds later. Okay, now that that's done, let's get to layering our goods. So we're gonna start with our sprayed slow cooker. This is a six quart, I think. And I have 30 ounces of these shredded hash browns. And you do wanna thaw these a little bit. I'd say these are like, half thawed and we're gonna make basically two and two and a half layers so i'm starting with a layer of the potatoes i'm gonna put on half of my cooked chorizo chorizo however you want to say it mm, doesn't that look delicious and i do realize it you know it's like all going in my mouth together but i like the i like the pretty layers you know like ogres are like layers ogres have layers. And then a layer of a Mexican style cheese. This is the one I have today, this thick cut one. You can use whatever one you want. Just gonna grab a really generous handful and kind of go over the top of that. And rinse and repeat. Don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. No, my body don't. Top with the rest of your potatoes here. Now that we have all of our layers in here, it's time to add our eggs. So I have 12 eggs with one cup of milk beaten right here. And don't forget to add some salt to this. We wanna salt each layer of our dish. The chorizo is quite salty. The hash brown potatoes already have salt in them, so we do wanna salt our eggs as well. Pour this all over the top. 
Now, this only takes four and a half hours on low, or you can crank it up to high, go for two hours, or my crock pot cooks really, really hot. So what I could do is turn this to keep warm, which is actually a really hot function on my slow cooker, and leave it overnight while you're sleeping for eight to 10 hours, check it in the morning. We are actually gonna be doing breakfast for dinner tonight, so I'm setting this up at about noon. I will see you for one of my kids' favorite dishes, any type of breakfast for dinner, it's always a kid pleaser. So mine's gonna go on low for four and a half hours. I'll see you then. Later. Oh, it has been four and a half hours. So sizzly. I'm gonna see if I can scoop some of this up so you can see it. I think this is the best way to do it with just a spoon. Look at those layers. Everything looks cooked and cheesy and delicious. I'm gonna dish this up for my boys. I'm also watching my two nephews too, so we are definitely going to tackle this today. To make my slow cooker whole roasted chicken, I will mix up my spice blend. You could absolutely use a pre-made spice blend, but I'm going to make mine from scratch. It only takes a minute or so. One tablespoon of brown sugar, two teaspoons of salt, one whole teaspoon of pepper. You can grind it yourself, but ain't nobody got time for that. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, the piece de resistance, some paprika. Let's do an entire tablespoon of paprika. Give that a little stirry stir, and now you have your seasoning blend for your whole chicken. So let's get out that chicken and the crock pot. In my crock pot, I have some foil and this uh, rack right here I stole from my Instant Pot. <laughs> you could also fashion one out of foil if you wanted to. And here is my whole chicken. And I always feel like when you have one of these, I always want to make it do like, hello, my baby, hello, my honey. Hello, my baby, hello, my honey. And have him do the can can. Is that just me? Okay, basically, we're just going to lay our chicken uh, down on that rack. And a way that you can tuck these wings in is kind of roll them under so these tips don't get too dark like that. Oops. Well, that one doesn't want to stay very well, but fold them a little bit. Next, sprinkle your spice mixture like all over that, like rub it in, get it in there. And like I said, you don't have to use this one, you could use a different one, but I would give this one a try. That's all she wrote. That's as easy as this is. I'm gonna tuck my foil in a little bit just so it doesn't block my lid. Lid goes on and cook it on high for three to four hours until the chicken is cooked through. Now, obviously all slow cookers vary in their temperature. So if you need to go a little bit longer, like use your judgment here. If yours runs hot, maybe you're three to four hours. If yours does not run as hot, maybe it's a little longer. And of course you can always put it on low for the entire day. If you're gonna be gone for summer activities or if you work, don't forget to plug it in. Three hours later. After a couple of hours, your chicken is going to be 100% cooked, but it's not gonna have that brown crispy crust. If you do want that, this is gonna have to go into the broiler for about five minutes. So let's go ahead and transfer this to some kind of roasting pan or glass baking dish and throw it under the broiler for a few minutes so we can have that nice, crispy, most decadent chicken skin. This slow cooker side dish starts with a mixing bowl and a skillet. I know, weird, right? I have one pound of fingerling potatoes, which by the way, I had to go to three stores to find. We'll season our potatoes with a little bit of olive oil here, maybe about one to two tablespoons, some paprika, maybe a quarter to a half a teaspoon. Fresh thyme. The way I like to do this when it's fresh like this is just kind of pull it backwards down the stem because you definitely don't want the stem in there. But if you haven't tried fresh thyme, the smell is intoxicating. And some black pepper. How about that, huh? You're both fired. 
And even though bacon is salty, potatoes are not. So I'm gonna add a little drizzle of salt as well and give these a mix. And I'm wearing gloves gloves because I do have an open wound on my finger. Um, and if my hands are gonna be like in the food, it's important to keep the food safety. You know what I'm saying? Once these are all coated like this, it's time to wrap the bacon around them. Whatever bacon you're using, of course I'm using my Porter Road bacon. Cut it in half down the center. Otherwise it'll be too long and then you'll just wrap it around like that. That's about all you do. This is a really big one. Let's try and do a whole piece on this one. Yeah, I got a whole piece on that one. Look at that. Once they're all wrapped, it's time to go over to our skillet to give them a quick sear, and then we will transfer them to the slow cooker. You can keep me in a cage made of tired ideas. It's rusting out faster by the day. After just a few minutes, you're essentially trying to get the bacon to render some of its fat and tighten around the potato which we have done here. Clearly they're not cooked. The potatoes are not cooked, so they're in my slow cooker. I have about three quarters of a cup of chicken broth down at the bottom. The lid is going on. Ooh, there we go. And we will cook on high. Wow, I need to wipe that off. We will cook on high for three hours. I feel like this is the perfect side dish to make and then walk away. Do all of your errands. You can make the main dish, the roast, the chicken, the steaks, whatever you wanna do. This could also be good for a potluck kind of a situation if you wanted a fun and unique side dish. Try and find smaller finger length potatoes than I found though. These suckers were really big. See you in three hours. Several bad puns later. This slow cooker Italian sausage soup is something that I'm just kind of making up on the fly. I've eaten it as a pasta dish, but we're gonna turn it into a slow cooker meal because number one, I don't wanna cook all day in the kitchen. We're busy, we're out playing, and I wanna see if I can convert it to a crock pot meal. So I'm going to start with a couple of onions, like one and a half diced onions in there. A little bit of garlic, you can chop your own, but I didn't because, hello, hashtag lazy. It's like a tablespoonish of garlic. I have my Italian sausage that I got from Porter Road. I cooked it on the stove. I took it out of the casings and crumbled it up and cooked it on the stove. So this is nice and cooked and browned up. Next up are some artichoke hearts. I have this quartered artichoke hearts. I am going to drain it and dump this whole can in. Do you like artichokes? I love them. I feel like they're so buttery and really mild in flavor, I think about a half a cup of sun-dried tomatoes, whatever brand you want, but you do want them to be diced or smaller chunks. You don't want the big, big chunky ones because those are really hard to eat. If you've never tried sun-dried tomatoes or you think maybe you don't like them, I would give them a go in a dish like this where they're kind of really spread out. They have, I think they have a really sweet flavor. I, I just think they're delicious. I probably wouldn't just sit and eat them out of the jar, but I, I love them. Okay, so I have about half of this jar in here and I'll stick that in the fridge and deal with that later. Next up is whatever chicken broth you wanna use. I have this one in my pantry from Thrive Market, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this chicken bone broth. And the idea is you have enough chicken broth to cover everything, you know, like a soup, and I'm a little shy there, so I'm gonna have to add a little bit more. Okay, I did water and a little bit of powdered chicken bouillon because I didn't have enough of the bone broth stuff, but that's okay. So now it looks a little bit like a soup, right? At this point, your lid goes on and you're gonna cook on low all day while you're going about your business. Just walk away, leave it alone. And when we're getting closer to the time to eat, we will add our pasta, some cheese, and then serve this up with some crusty bread, you will not regret it. I'll see you at the end of the day. Oh my gosh, I forgot the crushed red pepper flakes. Add the crushed red pepper flakes. Okay, glad I remembered before it got too late. Let's do, that's probably a quarter teaspoon. It's not even that many. 
Okay, now walk away. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Once it's cooked for a couple of hours and all the flavors have come together like so, I feel like I don't have enough liquid in here for the pasta, but hey, we're just gonna try it. So time to dump the pasta in. I have my heat on high right now and we'll let it sit for about 30, 45 minutes and come back and check it. Inches later. Quick review of the recipes that I showed you today. The breakfast casserole that we had for the dinner, huge hit. I fed all six people in my family and I probably had four or five full servings left over. So I would say that recipe feeds 10 pretty easily. Maybe you could stretch it to 12 if you did some fruit side dishes, maybe some English muffins or something also on the side. I ended up serving the whole chicken with the bacon wrapped potatoes. Please go make the bacon wrapped potatoes. The bacon, okay, the Porter Road bacon is freaking amazing. It's when Dave had it, he was like, dude, what is up with this bacon? This is legit the best bacon I've ever had in my life. In his life and the potatoes were so creamy. These mashed potatoes are so creamy. I don't understand why they were so good. <laughs> and then the pasta was also a huge hit. The flavors were on point. Dave has been taking the leftovers of that dish for lunches for work and he's like, oh, the flavors of the pasta is just mwah. Highly recommend every single one of these recipes to you. You know I would not give you a bad recipe. And if you wanna try out these amazing quality meats, I have been so impressed. Go to porterroad.com slash FFM. You're gonna love it, I guarantee it. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next video.